Richard Newman and Bill Eddy have a new documentary called Addicted to Joy, all about the love of surfing, and they join me now to tell us all about this film. Richard and Bill, nice to have you here. Thanks. Great to nice be here. To be here. Tell here. me what the genesis of this film was, Richard. The genesis was a surfboard that I saw hanging in a studio where I was shooting a music video, <laughs> and the owner said, let's have lunch and talk about it. And he said, I want to make a coffee table book. And when I heard the story, I went, oh boy, this is way different than a coffee table book. <laughs> and three days later, we left Santa Cruz and we were doing interviews in San, San Diego. Amazing. Three and days. Bill, and Bill, you got involved and, and you, you thought to yourself, this is a story that needs to be told? Definitely. I had seen the original movie and there were some things about it that I like and some things I didn't like. One of the important things to me in any film, documentary or otherwise, is the music and how it sets the tone. Sure. And so, uh, and I thought the first film was maybe a bit too long. Just And so Richard and I started after, uh, after we had been over to uh, Spencer Crowell's archives and library and he'd been so gracious to open all of that for Richard and, uh, and for us. Uh, we just sort of started talking, uh, Richard and I just sort of talking and working and texting and things just sort of fell into place and uh, the expression that we use on the golf course is we ham and egged it pretty well <laughs> <laughs> and we still do but I, I particularly admired Richard's level of integrity and how he wants to make sure that the right people have credit for what they've done and what they've provided and and uh, so we just we just kept working and talking and evolving and uh, if the, we we they made a lot of changes listened to a lot of music and and there's that's the film. part of it so the, the interesting thing to me about is is that you find there is uh, and you talk about relationship and you talk about spiritual what are we going to learn Richard in this film that we haven't learned about the surf culture I think you'll learn about the depth of the passion of the people that started it and why they started it. Um, there's a quote. There's a quote from Hobie Alter when he opened his first thing that opened his first store that said, "Well, you're all going to go out of business." His friend said, "You'll go out of business because after you sell a surfboard to the, to the 250 surfers in California, you're done. You're done." Yeah. And at that time, there was nobody there, and it was such a small group that everybody knew everybody and worked together at something that evolved in front of them, from, you know, planks to, to balsa to big, co big core form after a foam after the, uh, after the war to all of a sudden m shorter boards and better foam and then the short board and then the Olympics this the, year. The evolution of all of that is incredible to it me. It happened so fast. And, it, you know, I started surfing when I was about 10, 11 years old. And, and to see the changes happening. But we were in the throes of a cultural revolution at the, in the 60s, you recall. Yes, we were. And that's part of what surfing is, right, Bill? Very much so. Uh, it all dates back to the ancient Polynesians, it, it, their, their freedom, uh, their enjoyment, and uh, their respect for nature and the water. And it, it, just, it just all moved forward. And at a point in the film last year, I think we we kind of just sort of stopped and said, There's, this is something special. There's a message here. There's a real important message. And, uh, and it, 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 it transcends politics. It not, only, it not only relates to the world of surfing and surf culture, but the uh, whatever yeah. anybody does for a living, <laughs> respect, reverence, and things like that. Commitment, Commitment. Uh, craftsmanship. There's kind yeah. of a spiritual undercurrent in your film. Do you feel? I, 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 I would hope so. I, I, I'd <laughs> always, I always wanted to have that there because I want to leave the world a better place than I found it. And but don't all surfers want to do that? I think at our I core think, we want to do that. I think that's the connection that was so attractive to me. As, as a non-surfer, I mean, one day in, in Santa Monica in 1984, going over a nine foot and breaking my shoulder and realizing Congratulations. it's probably, it's probably the, not my... You joined the wipeout cast. Yeah, probably not my sport, you know, but um, just so attracted to the, the dedication and the awareness of the planet and the connection to nature and mm -hmm. the 
individuality and the challenge, you know, the don't give up, the everything about it, just take it as far as they can take it. It's, it's fascinating, it's beautiful. Uh, you see the Duke there, uh, Duke Kahanamoku, and then of course the wood, uh, the wood shape boards, and, and uh, those are the, the, those are the things that those there's like trophies in surfers' uh, little you know archive in there. What yeah. do they call that? Their uh, quiver. Their quiver. Yeah, quiver. yeah. I, I I should know that because my quiver's reduced from ten boards to three now. <laughs> They're all long boards. But here, uh, Bill, now you said something about this film that it's it's getting some it's getting some notoriety. You might get into some festivals. What's the ultimate goal of the film? you think? Well, I don't know that we have an ultimate goal. I think that we, uh, early on, uh, I think we said, why don't we shoot for the Newport Beach Film Festival, knowing that it was not going to uh, show until the end of April of this year. And we, because of the private screening that we had in Newport Beach, uh, and it had to be free, because if if you're chosen for the Newport Beach Film Festival, it has to be a world premiere for them. You can't, you right. can't have charged or anything like that. And I think after that screening, uh, it was through a good friend of mine who saw the film. I didn't even know that he showed up. And <laughs> he, one of his best friends was on the program committee for the festival. Mm -hmm. And so that got started. And some other things have just come our way as... We've had the trailer, and you know we've talked about certain people, and I've met a lot of new people yeah. that have helped and say, "This is great. We want to, you know, we think you can do this and do that." So, it's it's sort of taking on a, a life momentum. of its own. Yeah. Yeah. But we're very excited about it because we do think we have something very special. It's it's just it's a love story. It's a, it's another surfing movie. It's a love story. Yeah. Right. I, you, know, you know, Greg Knoll did very well with the Writing Giants movie in, 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 the, in the festival circuit. And I wish you all the very best on this film. It's, it's, it really is a love story to, to surfers like me and, and to you. So uh, uh, we'll look for it online. We'll look for it in theaters and hopefully in, it'll make the festival circuit and we'll be able to see it uh, globally because it's a terrific message. We'll right, let you thank know. You. Thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. Thank, thank you. Appreciate you. Really, really appreciate it. And as uh, Bill Letty says, aloha. Yeah. <laughs>